Now, there is a document in the group project folder that gives you some more detailed guidelines on your final report. Now, I want you to keep in mind that these are guidelines. They are not hard, fast rules. These are essentially length recommendations that I pulled from previous reports that students have turned in where they've done very, very well, keeping in mind where they were very, these were A papers where they were concise to the point and included all the information that I wanted. And by the way, this is single spaced. Not double spaced, single spaced. Your report can be either single spaced or double spaced, it's up to you. But these length suggestions or guidelines are for a single spaced document. All right, what are your main components? Scroll down here. Your executive summary, I already talked a little bit about that for this class. Your exec executive summary will be a separate section or a separate page. Usually it's about, like I said, half to three quarters of a page. If it's single spaced, it really shouldn't be any more than one page. It can be a page, that's okay, but no more than one page single spaced. Can you guys see that okay? Is it big enough? Yes? You guys in back, you can see it? Okay. You're going to have an introduction. It's just one to two paragraphs. As I mentioned, you want to talk about what the project is about and a little bit about the product. It's fairly, fairly short. Then you're going to talk about what's called your methodology or your methods. This is where you are talking about how you conducted your tests, what you did. You are describing what was done. Make sure you include things like, what was the physical location? What was the equipment that was used? Those sorts of things. Include how many sessions you took to run your participants. Did you run all of them in one day, in one, you know, one session, one after the other? Did you have to run multiple sessions? If you ran multiple sessions, did you have multiple facilitators? You just include that information. Now, when you are discussing about your methodology, I do want you to refer to your forms and your documents, because remember, you are turning those in also. But things I don't want you to do. One, do not copy and paste your forms into the methodology and think that's your method, method section. Even if you include this other information, I still do not want you to copy and paste your forms into the method section. You want to describe what each form was like, one, two sentences, and you refer to the form. Do not copy and paste the form into your method section. I know I've said that several times because it's hap it happens every semester. You want to make sure you include your participant recruitment and selection protocol. In other words, how did you find participants? Keeping in mind that as I mentioned previously, as long as your participants meet who your primary user is, it can be your brother, it can be your aunt, as long as it can be someone you found in the library, as long as they meet who your primary user is. So you want to, you want to describe your methodology in enough detail that I would be able to look at it and reproduce it. Make sense? All right, then there's the results. Okay, we'll go back down to that in a minute. Can we fit it? Yes, we can. Your results. Oh, did I mention that your methodology, sorry, will be one to two pages single spaced. On occasion, I have had groups who will include photographs or some other type of, uh, of, of visual. In that case, it's a little bit longer. Keep in mind when you do put those in, it will make these sections longer. And that's okay. It makes it nice. Not required, though. All right, your results. Your results will be between two to four pages. With your results, I want to know what you found. Now, in knowing what you did and knowing what you found, I do want to know what your tasks were. Now, you can either put 
uh, your task wording in your methods or your results. I've actually had groups who've been able to do either, you know, some have to put them in methods, some have put them in the results very, very successfully. But you have to make sure it flows. Make sure you don't just say task one, task two, task three, and you don't say what the tasks are. You do need to know. So for your tasks, the first thing you should do is discuss your demographics. That's the information that you collected in your, do you remember which document? Starts with an E. What? Excel. Yes, it's, it's, it's in your Excel, but what's the first document uh, that you give your participant to actually fill out after the consent form? E-N, T, your entrance form, your entrance questionnaire. <laughs> yes. All right, your demographics typically are find, found on your entrance questionnaire. You do have to enter those in Excel because you hear you are summarizing. What I don't want is a list of participant one was blah, 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 blah. Participant two was blah, 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 blah. Participant three was a, you know, blah, blah, blah. Summarize. How many males? How many females? Right, well, you know, this many had this, you know, this amount of computer experience. This had me that amount of computer experience, depending on what you collect. You want to discuss your findings for each task. Discuss your overall feedback. Usually your overall feedback comes from what? Also starts with an E. Exit questionnaire. Exit questionnaire. Yeah, this one I actually put the answer up there. Include tables and graphs of your results. It always makes it a lot easier to understand. Use them in a manner that makes the document easier and your results easier to understand. And again, Remember what I said about your tables and graphs in Excel. If you want it in your final document, where should you put it? In the final document. I know it sounds silly, but I'm telling you, when you guys are focused on rushing to get this in on time, it's one of those things people sometimes forget. All right, so your results should be two to four pages. Your conclusions and project recommendations are some of the last things that you're going to be including. Those should be one to two pages. So based on your results, what can you conclude about this particular product that you evaluated? And what recommendations do you make? Keeping in mind your recommendations for those things that worked well are probably going to be this worked well, we recommend that this not change. For those things that did not work well, then you need to actually make some suggestions in terms of alternatives. All right, does it make sense? Yes, yes, yes? No? Maybe. Yes? All of the, uh, the, the test prep documents, like the questionnaires and all that, that's purely just for collecting data, right? You don't want to see those? Oh, you have to scan those in and give them to me. Okay. Or you can physically bring them in. Now, I recommend that you do not attach it to your Word document because then it makes it huge. And students have had difficulty uploading it in that case. But yeah, those you do need to turn into me. I want to know that you collected data. Actually, I actually find it very interesting to, to look at those. All right, any other questions? So you guys are ready to create your final project documentation, right?